Hey, Destination, I'm John, uh, and we are in the middle of a series about the Gospels, uh, the books and the biographies that tell us the life of the greatest person to ever walk the earth, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Now, Jesus' story is recorded in these four books, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and every single one of these authors have, has a different perspective. Uh, they have different backgrounds, different stories, different personalities, uh, but they all tell the same story of the same person, uh, and we can look to them to learn things about Jesus' life, uh, not just the way he lived, the things that he said, the miracles he performed, and the, the legacy he left behind that we are still walking in today. Uh, now, we've studied and we've looked at a number of our other uh, Gospels so far, and we want you to check those out for sure. Uh, but today we're going to be looking at one of my favorite, and I say this all the time, but they're all 66 books, my favorites. Uh, but we're going to look at the book of Luke. Uh, now, Luke was a doctor, uh, a man of learning, uh, probably not a Jew. Uh, he writes very much to the Greco-Roman area of the day, so probably to Romans and to Greeks. Uh, and Luke's book is actually pretty unique because it's not just a one-off. See, uh, if you would believe it, Luke is actually part one of a two-part series. In the book of Luke, Luke tells the story of Jesus, and we get my gospel, the story of his life, death, resurrection, and all the things that we're going to go over today. But can you believe it? Luke was, of course, the doctor, decided to write more than he needed to, and he actually does a part two. Uh, Luke wrote the Acts of the Apostles, or the Acts of the Emissaries, uh, a record of the things that the followers of Jesus did after Jesus passed away. And, well, because nobody else has done it, came back from the grave and then ascended it into heaven. Uh, so Luke is writing twofold this two-part series, and he writes it to this person named Theophilus. Now, Theophilus is uh, a name, and we believe it is a person, but Theophilus actually all, also means lover of God. Theo, God, Philus, lover. And so we don't know if this is an actual name of a person, but we did know that this was somebody that he was a believer. And Luke's intent is to give an accurate account of the life and works of this person, Jesus Christ. Now, Luke writes to a Greco-Roman audience. It's not to a Jewish audience. So he needs to really work hard to make that connection. And he does that by a couple of things. One at the very beginning, when Luke gives Jesus a family tree, whereas Matthew and the other authors would probably lean it up to King David or bring it up to Abraham, Luke brings it all the way up to Adam to show that this king that is coming isn't just isolated to the nation of Israel, but that he is from Israel for the whole world. And so when Luke writes his story, that's what he does. And as a medical doctor, one of the things that Luke does is he keeps highlighting over and over and over again, Jesus's stories of miraculous healing. Isn't that strange that a medical doctor would look at that and go, listen, I want to point to you. These are the things that Jesus is doing, healing the sick and helping people that I know as a medical doctor, I couldn't do. His evidence and his testimony was so powerful. Now, Luke would write these things and highlight them and get them into the Bible, uh, but Luke also had somebody else that he would consistently hi highlight. Uh, now, Luke would highlight the work of the person of the Holy Spirit through Jesus Christ. Uh, every single time that you'd see a miracle, well, often when you'd see a miracle, you'd see Luke highlight the fact that the Holy Spirit was working through Jesus or the Holy Spirit was working through a disciple, that it was by the power of the Holy Spirit that a, that a work was done. And so Luke is highlighting those portions to, to show people that Jesus came and was empowered by the Spirit. And I rem remember this. Luke is writing all this after Jesus' life, death, and resurrection. And Jesus had made a promise that we would do greater things than even he did in his life. So when he writes these, his goal is to connect our lives and our empowerment to Jesus's. That we are supposed to look at Jesus' life not just as a high standard of the things we could never do. Now, that's not the goal. That actually Jesus is supposed to be our example of what we're supposed to experience by the power of the Holy Spirit. That signs, wonders, miracles, that those things are actually supposed to flow normally in the life of the believer. Man, that's a powerful, powerful, powerful statement. And so as Luke wraps up his story, he tells the full life of Jesus, emphasizing those elements. We can know that just like Jesus, we can be empowered by the Holy Spirit to make a difference, not just in our lives, but into eternity. And that is good news. And that's why we study the Gospels. So, hey, I hope you enjoyed that. We'll see you all next week for the Gospels.